Good morning, good morning, people of God. How are you doing today? What a great joy to come to you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Precious saints of God, what a great blessing to call upon Jesus. What a great blessing to come together this morning to celebrate Jesus Christ. Amen. Good Friday to you. What a blessing. What a great joy. Can somebody type in the comments, Jesus is King. Jesus is alive. Jesus is my king. Jesus is my savior. Praise the Lord, the people of God. Today is the last day of our prayer here together in the morning for this month of March. People of God, we've been praying this whole month together. Today is the last day because we take a break on Saturday and Sunday. And then we pick up on Monday again. So I will see you guys back on Monday. Uh, uh, on Monday, I'll see you to start our new prayer challenge for the month of April. And I'll tell you, it's been a great blessing to pray with you guys this month. Amen. How many of you know that we prayed a lot? If you've been, let me see. How many of you uh, started on day one? You've been praying this whole month with us. How many of you have been consistent? You've been pressing into God in your prayer every morning. You're here. You're praying with us. You know, it blesses me so much. The number of people that send me praise reports all the time say, Fernando, I, for the first time, I was able, for the very first time, I was able to pray the whole month. That blesses me more, my heart more than anything. Hey, I get it. I love miracles. I love, you know, I love when you guys send me praise report of miracles and blessings you received, but... Nothing makes me more happy than you when you say, Fernando, for the first time I've been able to pray a whole month connecting to Jesus. Amen. That is a huge blessing. Yeah, we celebrate miracles. That's what we are about. We believe in miracles. We believe that miracles are for today. We believe. Amen. But. A life of prayer is the most important thing that you can that you can uh, you know establish in your life. A life that is strong in God, a life that you know that that consistent prayer life, that is the most important thing. So and for those who pray every month, you're here every month, you're praying with us. Hey, what a blessing. Good for you. Amen. Good for you. That's what it's all about. Developing a strong life of prayer so that you can pray for yourself. You can pray for your family. Amen. Isn't this awesome that you can get trained for free? Every day as you join us here, you are learning because that's what we're strong about. That's what we emphasize a lot you developing a strong life of prayer so that you can pray for yourself and you can pray for your family. Can't imagine what a blessing that you, you, you can be so, you can be trained to be a strong man and woman of prayer and you can be the answer to your family. You can be that one, amen, opening the way for your family. That is incredible. That is amazing that, you know, the, I remember, how many of you remember when we used to call the internet the devil? Oh, don't get into this thing about the internet. You know, I, I even remember that. <laughs> I thought that internet was the devil, but 
how many of you are blessed that we have the internet that, you know, that we can use the internet to connect with each other, to encourage each other on a daily basis, to help each other to grow spiritually. Amen. Praise God. I remember, man, uh, the church that I was part of, they would say all the time, be careful this internet. The internet is the mark of the beast. The internet is the devil. <laughs> and now every church uses the internet. <clears throat> Amen. So it's a blessing that we can encourage one another and come together every day to lift up the name of Jesus, to pray for one another, to encourage one another. That's what we are all about. Amen. We believe in healing, deliverance, miracles, all of that, and we love to pray for those things. But the most important thing is that your life of Prayer is made strong every time you pray with us. My prayer is that God will strengthen you in the inside and that you, you know, continue on this, you know, continue to persevere in your walk with God through prayer. Praise God. How I many of you are ready? This morning we are celebrating every end of the month, every, you know, Every end of the month, we partake Holy Communion. How many of you are ready? Get your communion ready. As you can see this morning in the title, we are partaking Holy Communion. We're just celebrating Jesus. Amen. We're celebrating Jesus. Uh, today is Good Friday. Amen. We are celebrating Eastern. Uh, and it's all about Jesus. Somebody say it's all about Jesus. Amen. It's all about the Lord Jesus. We have a Savior. Amen. Some people, you know, may question, but the dates, I'm not sure the dates. Is the dates right? Oh, listen, get over that. We are not celebrating a date. We are not celebrating a pagan, you know. People come up with all kinds of stuff. Amen. We are not celebrating, you know, egg, you know, egg buns. We are not celebra celebrating uh, uh, you know, even a, you know, a ritual. We are celebrating Jesus. If the day is right, if what people do is right or not, it, listen, we are not going there. We know one thing. We have a king. His name is Jesus. He came to this world. He died. Amen. He rose again, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Amen is the same thing we can we go over, you know, at Christmas. You know, people debate. There's a whole debate about the date, about the... Uh, listen, people of God, let's just be mature and let's just go beyond that. Let's just mature ourselves, amen, and just understand we are not doing as a ritual. This is not a ritual. This is not a, a religious thing. This is life. The reality is that we have a king. We have, amen, a savior. His name is Jesus. He died on that cross of Calvary. Amen. He rose again. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he himself, Jesus himself, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. And so we're going to partake communion. And, uh, and we're going to celebrate what Jesus did for us. This whole month, we prayed, we, you know, we came together to lift up the name of Jesus, to believe, amen, and now we are celebrating, we're thanking him for everything he did for us. Praise God. If you don't believe in celebrating Eastern, you think, oh, that's a pagan, you know, uh, 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 holiday, that is, uh, listen, we are not going there. <laughs> we are not talking about you know, egg buns, we're not talking about, you know, uh, all this. I agree, there's a lot of a lot of crazy stuff that is still the, you know, they steals the, the, 
or that that can let's say this there's a lot of things when it comes to Christmas when it comes to Easter there's a lot of things that can lead people astray and can take the focus of the real thing and we don't want that we don't want none of that we don't participate on that we you know we do this in remembrance of Christ once again this is not a ritual this is not about a even a day We're doing this in remembrance of Jesus. We're doing this in remembrance of the Lord and what he did for us. If the day is right, if people do with right motives or not, that's none of our business. Amen. What do we do? We do the right motives. We do with Jesus in our hearts. We do because we know that he is a life. Amen. Does that make sense? You know, because... Some of you say, Fernando, what are you talking about? Listen, I get a lot of emails, people of God, believe me. And every time when we do, uh, like, you know, when we, you know, at Christmas or we're at, you know, Easter, you know, uh, resurrection, you know, weekend, whatever you want to call, a lot of people, you know, they send me, a lot, see, a lot of people, they call, you know, that's a pagan, you know, a pagan holiday in this, that. Listen, we are not doing that. We're not celebrating any pagan holiday, anything we are doing in remembrance of Jesus. Let's, let's do that. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus. If people do with wrong motives, if they do, celebrate whatever uh, uh, with rogue motives that's between them and God we have right motives we're doing and you know and even if it was not eastern even if it was not you know the resurrection you know weekend weekend we do anyways every end of the month we participate you know we take holy communion we participate in holy communion because that's one of the things we do here in our prayer chat, you know, challenge, we finish with participating, you know, we take Holy Communion. Praise God. So if you have your Bible, you can open up your Bible to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. We're going to read this really quick, and then we're going to partake communion, and then after we're just going to thank the Lord. We're going to thank Jesus for everything that he did in our lives this month, amen, tonight, uh, today, I don't want us even to, you know, ask, you know, let's just thank the Lord, how about if we take this last day of this prayer challenge to thank Jesus for everything he did for us, amen, we have a lot to celebrate, we have a lot to be grateful for, so if you have your Bible open to first, open to first Corinthians chapter 11, Verse 23, the Bible says this, For I received, get your communion ready, because we're going to partake communion. The Bible says, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And I want to remind you that we do this in remembrance of our Lord Jesus. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then... Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilt of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves that is why many among you are sick and uh, weak and sick 
and a number of you have fallen asleep. Amen. And so this is what we're going to do. People of God, I want to give you a minute. I want to give us a minute for us to uh, examine our hearts before we partake communion. Before we partake communion, I'm going to give us a couple, you know, a minute or so of a silence where I want you to confess your sin, sins, get right with the Lord. If there's anything you have to repent, if there's anything that you have to get right with the Lord, if there's any unforgiveness, anything in your heart, I want you to, you know, just give to the Lord and say, God, cleanse my heart. Amen. It's really important that we examine our hearts. I don't believe in partaking communion just, uh, you know, without examining our hearts. The last time that I, I, I took communion, you know, and this was out of my church, I was amazed that, you know, they rush into partaking communion and they don't give people the time to examine their hearts. They just take communion. Uh, it, it, it feels like a ritual. And you shouldn't be like that. We are. We have to be... Uh, uh, aware of what we're doing. This is not a religious thing. We are to examine our hearts and look within and get right with God And as we partake communion. So right now, I want to give you a minute. Close your eyes wherever you are if you are able and look within and ask the Lord to examine your heart. Ask the Lord to you know, forgive you. Ask the Lord to cleanse your heart. And then we're going to partake communion afterwards. Amen. Let's do that right now. Yeah, take this moment to examine your heart to get right with the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look how God is so good. People of God, as I was getting my heart, checking my heart here, the Lord just showed me, highlighted me so strong. Something that happened yesterday that I had to get right with the Lord. That's why, you know, you have to examine your heart. You have to check your heart. Yesterday, uh, this happened yesterday. I was... Uh, uh, I finally had the opportunity to to see uh, a person that did a work for me uh, a month. Uh, uh, well, it's been more than a month ago, but for a month, uh, this person did uh, some work here in my house for me. And this person did a, a I'll tell you, a, a very, uh, uh, it was not a, a, a professional work. I hired a person to get a work, to get a work done here in my house. And this person promised all kinds of stuff, and the work was just not not good. 
And, uh, and for a month, I'm trying to, you know, I'm contacting this person to come and, you know, and, and do a better job and, you know, and because it was still in the warranty what he did. Uh, and I could, I could not get this guy to finish the work, to come here to my house and finish the work. And I'm telling you, I, uh, I've been, uh, you know, trying and trying to contact this person. He was just ignoring and was not, you know, coming and finishing the work. But finally, yesterday, I had the opportunity to see him face to face and talk to him. And I'll tell you, I got in the flesh. I, I, was, I was very upset with him, which, you know, that's all of us. We, you know, that happens to all of us. But I, you know, as I was praying, you know, checking my heart, the Lord brought right, it was just so clear, you know, right back into my heart. And I totally forgot about it. And that happened yesterday. And the Lord brought that situation to my heart, so I had to get right with God this morning. People of God, you know, uh, communion is about remembrance of the Lord Jesus. And, you know, we remember of the Lord Jesus, what he did for us, and the cleansing of the heart. We have to cleanse our hearts before God. And this morning, as I was, you know, praying here, the Lord brought right back to my heart, that situation with that with that man and uh you know people of god as believers as believers we have a high standard we cannot act in the flesh we cannot be we, we cannot you know we uh, there's a standard for us and as a minister you know uh, I, I myself i have a there's a high standard i have and people are watching everybody is watching and uh, and I talked to that guy, and I was very strong with him, and I said, "Listen, what you did, you know, and everything that I said, it was right. Maybe the motive of my heart was not. Uh, maybe it was because you know, a month you're trying to get a hold of a person, and the person keeps ignoring you. I, I got in the flesh. I didn't fight him. I didn't, uh, you know, uh, none of that. I just simply." I talked to him, and, uh, but this morning, the Lord brought that situation to my heart, so I just had the opportunity to give that to the Lord and cleanse my heart on that situation. So, people of God, I want to encourage every one of you, before you partake communion, that you examine your heart. This is not a religious thing. This is not a ritual. This is a real thing. Amen. This is a real thing. This is really important that we uh, that we cling our hearts. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Thank you. Yeah, we definitely need to be transparent. You know, we listen. We're not here to impress nobody. We are not here to. You know, to. Trying to paint a picture that we are supermans. You know, superheroes. Super. You know ministers now we are humans we are you know we you know we all we all sin we all in the same we are in the same boat people of god we are going from glory to glory we are together in this there's not this thing about i'm mad you know better than others and and but this thing uh happened yesterday and i it for i forgot be honest with you i forgot about the situation yesterday with this man and uh, but this morning I was getting I was praying, you know, it came man so strong to my heart, and I had the opportunity to give that situation to the Lord. And right now, I don't, you know, I felt that that burden lifted. So praise God, but get your communion, let's just partake. And I'm gonna pray a final prayer for us before we partake of this communion, amen. How many of you know that we are now rushing to partake in communion? You know, I, I most uh, uh, unfortunately most of the churches that I, you know that I've been part of, they rush into uh, two things happen. Either they spend you know, you know, half an hour to you know, just beating people up and telling people you know that they're not worthy. I've been in, in ministries in church 
that it feels like the only the righteous, only you know, sinless people can partake communion, which is that is not biblical. Amen. Communion is for the body of Christ. And it's only Jesus. It's through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the body and blood of Jesus is what qualify us to partake communion. We are not self-righteous people thinking, oh, I'm qualified to partake communion. No, it's the blood of Jesus, the body and the blood of Jesus that qualify us. Amen? So there's this thing about being self-righteous and religious and perfect in order to partake communion. And the, the other side is rushing. The other side of the coin is I've been part of places where they just rush into community, don't even know what they're doing. It's just a ritual. Amen. But there's life in communion. There's power in partaking communion. So close your eyes. Let me pray this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, now I thank you for getting our hearts right with you before we partake in this holy communion. This is not a ritual. This is not a uh, uh, whatever people want to call. Father God, th this is life. Communion is life. And Jesus himself said, do this in remembrance of me. He didn't say do this in remembrance of a religion, of a denomination, of a church. He said do this in remembrance of me as a body. Do this and, and remind of what I did for you and remember that I'm coming back soon. Jesus, you are the king. And we, together, we repent of our sins. We examine our hearts. And if there's anything in our hearts that is not right before you, Father, we ask you that you forgive us, that you cleanse us, and as we partake in this Holy Communion, you unite us, you make us strong, you protect us, you bless us, everything that Jesus paid a price for with his precious blood and his body that was broken, we receive by faith. There's healing in communion. And as we partake of this communion, I pray that you heal our hearts, that you heal us, and that you give us the revelation, that you give us the revelation of the power of communion, the revelation of the power of partaking communion. This is not a ritual. This is not a religious thing. This is life. This is life. And we thank you. This is a symbolic of your, uh, 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 of what you did for us. And we thank you for the body that represents your body that was broken. For this cup that represents your blood that was shed on that cross for us. We do this in remembrance of you, Jesus. Thank you so much. We receive forgiveness. We receive healing. We receive uh, your strength as we partake communion this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You can partake of the bread. You can partake of the cup now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Come on, lift up your hands and praise Jesus. Our king is alive. We have a king. We have a savior. We have a messiah. He is alive. Jesus is alive. Thank you, Jesus, for communion. Thank you for healing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for everything that you did for us, for everything that you are doing. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. What a great joy, what a great blessing to come to the end, Lord God, of another prayer challenge. To finish this month strong, what a great joy, what a great blessing. Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus for every precious man and woman Every precious brother and sister, Lord God, that took this month to pray, to seek your face, to invest 
the most precious, to invest in the most precious thing that they can invest in their Christian walk, which is their life of prayer. I thank you for every one of them. And I pray, I ask you and I pray that you continue to strengthen my precious brother and sister in the place of prayer. Oh God, I pray for every one of them. Lord God, that they will continue to make prayer priority in their lives, that they will continue to go after you, that they will understand there's power in prayer. There's power in relationship with you. Prayer is not a ritual. Prayer is not a religious thing to do. Prayer is intimacy. The way that we get to know you, the way that we know your heart, the way that we grow in intimacy with you is through prayer. That's why prayer is so important in our lives. I pray for my brother, my sister today. I pray, Father, that you bless them. I pray that they will not quit. I, I pray that they will never give up in the place of prayer. Father God, I thank you for every one of them. They just accomplished an amazing, amazing thing. They just accomplished, Lord God, something so powerful. Lord God, taking this whole month to pray. Lord God, they just did something that most Christians, they don't do in a lifetime. They just accomplished something so powerful. And I'm so honored. I'm so proud of this man, this woman. I wish I could give them a big hug. I wish I could look them in the eyes and say, you did it. Well done, you did. You did the most important thing in life, which is to know you, is to develop a life of prayer it's through the place of prayer it's in the place of prayer that we get to know you god is in the place of prayer that we receive direction is in a place of prayer that we receive divine instructions is in the place of prayer that we become the very person that you create us to be and that's why hayton that's why Satan hates the place of prayer. That's why Satan, that's why all the kingdom of hell hate Christians that pray. Lord God, there are so many people in the body of Christ, they call themselves Christians. The, the devil don't even bother them because they are, they are already on easy prey to the enemy. Because they don't even pray. They don't seek your face. But the moment we pray. The moment we develop a solid life of prayer. Father God. We become dangerous. We become Father God. Uh, uh, the enemy's target. Because our life of prayer. Lord God. We mess up the kingdom of hell. We break demonic powers. We exercise our spiritual authority in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for every one of them. They just accomplished something so awesome. And Lord God, I pray, would you show them the importance of a life of prayer? Would you show them that the most important thing in their Christian walk, the most noble, the most Powerful thing to do, Lord God, is to know you. That is more important than working for you. The work that we do for you, Lord God, it flows out of our love for you. It does not flow out of duty, trying to impress you, trying to work for you to earn your love. No, we are a loved. Everything that we do, Lord God, everything that all the work that we do for you, Lord God, it flows. It flows out of our love, out of our gratitude for what you did in us. It's not to earn your love. It's not to impress you. It's not to feel more special. No, Father God, we are, we are already special. You love us the way that we are. You love us who we are. And you change us and you make us more like you. Lord God, I pray for my brother and my sister that they will never stop. They'll never go back to 
their old lifestyle as a believer. Lord God, regardless if they pray with me or not, regardless if they are here with me or not, Father God, that is not, Lord God, that important. The important thing is that they understand that they're one-on-one with you is the most important thing in life. If they want to join us next month here, praise God, we're going to do this together, Lord God. But if they feel, uh, you know what? I'm ready. I am trained. I'm, I'm strong now. I can do this on my own, me and God. Praise the Lord. I bless them and I pray, Father God, that they'll never stop praying. They'll never stop their lives of prayer, that they'll continue to, to go after you with all their hearts. I pray all of this in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus. Father, I bless them. I thank you for what you did this month in their lives. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that is going to unfold, for everything that is going to come into their lives as they, Lord God, uh, uh, as, they st- as they stood in prayer, as they believed, as they, Lord God, kept trusting you. I know that great things are coming for them, and I pray Bless them, strengthen them, continue to build them up in their faith. Continue to strengthen them to grow spiritually. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you, Father God, all the glory. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. You deserve deserve all the praise. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you and to you alone. And we worship you. And we praise you. And we give you all the glory. If you receive us, say amen. Say thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. My brother, my sister, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you as your brother in Christ that you continue that you continue to believe God, that you continue to fall in love with Jesus. I want to remind you there is nothing more important in life than your life of prayer. There is nothing, nothing more important than your life of prayer because that's how you get to know God. That is how you become strong in God. That's how you hear the voice of God Everything flows out of this place, people of God. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. What is seeking the first, uh, what is seeking the kingdom of God? Seeking God. You cannot seek the kingdom without seeking the king. Amen. You seek God. You seek the kingdom of God. You seek the presence of God and his righteousness. Amen. You seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything will be added to you. Everything that you need today. Every area in your life that you need a miracle. You need a breakthrough. You need a blessing. You need an area in your life to change everything. The answer is found in the presence of Jesus. The answers that you need today is found in the secret place. In the place of fellowship, in the place of communion with Jesus. Sometimes we just pin our wheels, trying to do so many things, trying to be successful, trying to succeed in life, and running around and trying everything with the power of our hands. And people of God, we can do a lot with the power of our hands. But, When you trust God, when you and I, when we trust God, people of God, we can go further and faster and we can finally step into what God is prepared for us. God prepared for us. Amen. With the power, the strength of your own hand, you can go so far. But with Jesus, with God on your side, you can go. Okay, you can Walk in your destiny, in your calling. You can fulfill everything that is in the heart of God. True fulfillment. The fulfillment that you're looking for. The joy that you're looking for. That success that you're looking for. 
is found in the presence of Jesus. Keep going after him. Keep trusting him. Keep believing him. And everything is going to be good. Amen. I want to encourage you to keep running after him. The more you run after God, the more your life will be empowered. The more you're going to be made strong. The more you're going to continue to grow spiritually. And nothing is going to stop you. People of God, you know we are a deliverance, a spiritual warfare prayer channel. We pray all the time for deliverance. But can I tell you, the way to overcome the devil, the way to overcome demonic powers, the way that you overcome spiritual battles, the way that you overcome the powers of darkness is through Jesus, is through a strong and solid life of prayer. I believe with all my heart that there's no devil in hell that can stop a man and woman of God that knows how to pray. A man and woman of God that trusts God. A man and woman of God that is living according to the Bible. There's no devil in hell. There's no curse. There's no witch. There's no Satan himself. There's no devil that can stop a child of God. That walk with God and that, that make pri- uh, uh, a life of prayer priority in their lives. As they keep walking in obedience to God, there is no demon in hell that will stop you. Keep walking with Jesus. Keep trusting Jesus. Keep surrendering your life daily to Jesus. And you're going to see what God is going to do in your life. It's so amazing that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God prepared for you. What God got in store for you is going to be so amazing. Not even yourself is going to recognize you. Not e- even you, you're going to be amazed by what God is going to do in your life as you continue to surrender your life to Him. Continue to fall in love with Him. I'm not talking about falling in love with a religion. Falling in love with the tradition of man, with man-made stuff. I'm talking about falling in love with the Bible. Falling in love with the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to transform your character, to transform your life. Allow the Word of God to change you from the inside out. And you'll see how awesome it's going to be. I pray that God brings you into a point. I pray that God brings you into this place where you don't care anymore. You don't care about opinions of man. You don't care about impressing man. You don't care about, okay, you don't, you're not caught up anymore into religion. But all you want is Jesus. You understand that Jesus is king. And that he wants to be Lord of every area of your life. And you are free to live a life. A life that is pleasing to him. People of God, that is my heart. I am free. From the opinions of man. I am free from. Religious nonsense. All that I want in my life. Is to know Jesus. All that I want. Is to get to know my king. My savior. My master. My everything. He is the only one. That died on that cross of Calvary. For me. When I was in a pit, when I was in the grip of Satan, he is the one that came to my rescue. He is the one that came with his loving kindness. He came to my rescue. 
And he is worthy. He is worthy. He is the one that came to rescue. He is worthy of every second of your life. Trust him. Surrender everything to him. Live for Jesus. Allow him to be Lord of every area of your life. And you're going to see your life being transformed. You're going to see your life changing. You're going to see great things. If you receive, say amen. Praise God, my brother, my sister, what a great joy. I wish I could give you a big hug. But here it goes, receive my hug. <laughs> I'll tell you, people of God, it is a joy. It is a joy of my heart to see people connecting to Jesus. It is a joy of my heart. You know, people of God, because we, you know, we are online, we are online prayer ministry. We don't, we cannot see each other, you know, face to face. You know, probably we will never see each other face to face. But one day, one day, we're going to meet in heaven. And I'm telling you, I want to see hundreds and thousands and millions of people say, you know what? I came back to Jesus because your prayer channel. I found Jesus. I listened to you. That's my heart. That millions of people, one day, when we get to heaven, when is our time to meet our maker? When we, when we you know, when if Jesus come back or we go to heaven, when he call us home, one day in heaven we'll be able to celebrate, look each other eye in eye, say, hey, <laughs> I remember those good times when we used to pray together. I remember those times when I would wake up early in the morning and I would just come online and, and pray and, and connect with Jesus. That is... That's what I live for. That's what I desire. That one day we'll be able to meet and celebrate. Amen. People of God, what a great blessing. What a great joy. Keep investing. The greatest investment that you can make with your life. The greatest investment that you can make with your time is to invest your time. Is to give your time to know Jesus. Give your time to know Him. He is worthy of your time. He is worthy. The most important thing thing you can do in life is to invest your time hours of your day to know Jesus and I pray that the Lord strengthen you I pray that the Lord help you to grow I pray the Lord minister to your heart and I pray that you never look back never look back in your old lifestyle never never look back in that prayerlessness in that life of Without prayer, don't ever go back to that. Keep going after Jesus with all your heart. The, the best days of your life is ahead of you. Amen. People of God, I love you. God bless you. Let me pray this final prayer over you. Open your hands. Let me pray this final prayer over you. My precious brother and sister, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you in the name of the Lord.
people of God, just a quick thing here, just a quick note. Let me remind you. Uh, I'll, one, I'll be live tonight again on my second channel to finish our, you know, this month of prayer, our evening prayers. And then tomorrow and Sunday, we are taking off. Amen. We take off. We pray Monday through Friday only. And then Saturday and Sunday, we take a break. And then we pick up on Monday. So Monday, Monday is April the 1st. And we are beginning a new prayer challenge for the month of, uh, for the month uh, of uh, April. It's going to be awesome. I'll share with you how we're going to pray in the month of April. Amen. I'll share with you on Monday morning how we're going to do that. And, but just know that uh, 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 April the first Monday, we're starting a new prayer challenge. And uh, from, from the start, okay, Monday, we're going to do the three days uh, fasting as well, you know, again, how many, how many of you remember that I shared that, you know, every, you know, every prayer challenge at the beginning of every prayer challenge, we start with the first three days, okay? The first three days, we start with prayer and fasting. So the first three days is, a, you know, we take the time to pray and fast. I want to encourage you to, you know, pray and fast with us. You can pray fast for whatever you feel led to pray fast. If you want to do for your family, you know, pray fast for your family. If you want to pray fast for your spiritual life, for your faith, for your strength, for you to be more, you know, to be empowered by the Lord to, you know, if you want to pray fast for your prayer life, you can do that. That God continue to strengthen you. If you want to pray fast for whatever area, you do that. If you want to do, a, you know, a Daniel fasting, if you want to do a water fast like I do, at this time, I'm going to do a liquid fast. And uh, so I will do the way that, you know, that I feel that I need to do. And you do as well uh, the way that you feel led by the Lord. But the reason why, you know, I'm encouraging is because I want to see as many Christians that follow as possible, you know, getting used to praying fasting is so powerful. It, you know, praying fasting, it helps you to grow in your walk with Christ. Amen. And, uh, and let me make it very clear, uh, okay, that if you are, you know, medication, if you're not able to pray fast, you know, uh, then, you know, you should, uh, you know, consult your doctors, okay? Uh, you know, I have to tell you that if you're not, you know, if you are taking medications, if you're seeing doctors, you should consult your doctor before you do any praying fasting. Amen. And, um, uh, Oh, yeah, and if you don't feel led to pray fast the first three days with us, you can still pray with us, okay? It's not a requirement. Is that clear? You are not required. It's not, you are not obligated to pray fast, okay? It's not an obligation. Is it? I say that it's not a, a, an obligation. It's an invitation, Okay, you are not obligated. It's you are invited. It's an invitation. If you feel that this is for you, praise God. But you can, you know, if you're not going to do the fasting, you can still pray with us. Amen. Start, you know, the new prayer challenge, praying with us. And, uh, but if you want to combine that with fasting, you can do that. But it's not required. It's not a, an obligation. Amen. I will do that. I'll be praying fasting the first three days. And if you want to do that, I'll be praying the first three days that God strengthen you, that God, you know, help you in your fasting. Praise God. What else? Well, people of God, uh, I love you. And it's been a great joy. It's been a great honor to pray and to, you know, and to stand with you this month of, uh, of March. And let's believe God for greater things in this month of 
April. Amen. Uh, I'll see you Monday morning. God bless you. Go out there, celebrate. I'm going to take my family out for a nice breakfast this morning. And, uh, and we're going to go out and celebrate God's goodness. Amen. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you Monday. Yeah, let me pray a final prayer. Almost forgot for my ministry partners. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. And I bless all my ministry partners, every one of them who help us to spread the word online. Those who are sharing our videos, those who are praying for us, those who are interceding for us. Lord God, those who uh, uh, support our channel. I pray that you bless them abundantly. I pray, Lord God, for everyone that gives. Lord God, through the links in the description of this video, those who give by super chat, super stickers, I pray that you bless them, that you continue to strengthen, to bless them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, people of God, I love you. God bless you and have a wonderful weekend in the name of Jesus. Shalom, peace.